Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see you this morning. I hope you've enjoyed uh, all that little extra music that Edna's been, been playing. I know I have. Puts a little bounce in your step. Hallelujah. Uh, getting it a lot to look like Christmas. Praise God. Uh, we are welcome you this morning. And as usual, uh, we will have a little music to bring us into the worship this morning. And uh, we welcome you here. Turn off your phones and give your attention to the Lord today and receive what he has for you. Amen. Today, we want to remind you the mitten tree is in the Northex, and people have already been putting things on today, so praise God. Um, if you want to be a part of that, you can bring some stuff in next week or the following week. Praise the Lord. Uh, there's a deacons meeting directly after church today. Deacons, okay, heads up on that. Um, let's see. Okay, um, I just want to remind everybody to try to bring an extra can of food in possibly, you know, or whatever you can that's non-perishable for, um, you know, the homeless and those that are less fortunate than us. We have person-to-person -person basket that we fill up and we take it down at the end of the month and we will be doing so. Um, but if you can bring in just a little bit extra, that would be a blessing. Thank you. 
Uh, you can give by Cash App. You all know the drill. I say the same thing every week. So if you need any help navigating that, just let Pastor or myself know. It's not hard. Uh, prayer meeting is at 5 o'clock. Um, we do it by conference call, so you don't even have to leave your house. You can just stick your phone to your ear, and I think we're all pretty good at doing that. <laughs> Praise God. So um, if you want to be a part of it, just call the pastor's cell phone, 203-984-0367. Call him or text him ahead of time, and then he can, you know, get you in on the call. And uh, we have a wonderful time praying. We pray about anything, everything, little things, in between, big, whatever it is. Because you know what? God answers them all. He is the God that knows every hair on your head. Have you ever tried to do that? Count every hair? Well, some of us have less than others. Yes, I know. But <laughs> still, you can understand what that means. So God cares about everything. Praise the Lord. Then service next week, 10 o'clock again. And we remind you that if you know anybody that cannot get to church, cannot really come, that you should tell them that we are on Facebook Live and we will be on YouTube just, you know, a little bit later, maybe the next day or the next, the next couple of hours. I'm not really exactly sure on that, but it, it does come. So um, you have no reason not to be fed by the Word of God. The pastor preaches it up straight and good. I am testimony of that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, so I pray you're having a wonderful Christmas season. I hope you are not... Um, frenzied about it all. I did a lot of my shopping, probably, mm, oh, I would say 95% of it already, all on Amazon, because I said I'm not going out there, <laughs> trying to get a parking place, trying to go, oh, yeah. After a while, we get wise, don't we? So, praise the Lord, it's a lot easier that way. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I just thank God that uh, my wife does almost all the, well, I should say all, the shopping with seven grandkids and six kids and in-laws and outlaws and whatever. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a, a blessing that she can get it done. So praise God for that. Amen. So we're going to sing our first hymn. Both of them are Christmas hymns. So 207. Stand if you can, sit if you must, no problem.
season. shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. appreciated hearing us sing the Christmas carols so we didn't shut the door and not allow uh, people to hear us uh, singing Christmas carols praise God so it was a good testimony amen amen anybody else have a testimony anything else yes Good news for your grandpa. Yes, praise God. We got a, a Christmas quote newsletter from uh, the uh, pastor down in uh, North Carolina, right? Clyde is down there. And uh, he is improving. The treatment is working. It's not out of the woods yet. Uh, just continue to keep him in prayer. But uh, things are, are moving along towards... Uh, never a cure but a remission hopefully coming up so 
we're happy about that. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony? Anything else God is doing in your life? Butch, good to see you. Amen. Uh, well, last week, weekend, in Manitoba, and then we came in the week of doing Thanksgiving uh, in life. Pray for my daughter Hannah's family. They've been taking turns being sick. So uh, there's a, a lot of illness going on and a lot of uh, flu going around. I have a prayer for another pastor. Uh, his name is David. He's from India. And he was supposed to be preaching down in New York City um, today. Uh, I got a text from him on Wednesday and he'd been sick with the flu for two days, and so I, he didn't even know if he was going to be able to make it to church on Sunday, so that was, uh, like I said, Wednesday, so I prayed that the Lord would heal him, I don't know, I haven't heard, but, uh, you know, you got to continue to pray and, and watch, amen. Edna? Yeah, uh, Janet, Tammy, Janet, Tina, Michelle, me, and my little, um, it's not so little, my great grandson, who will be eight next week, broke his wrist in two places. So he had that surgery, but he's doing fine. I talked to his mom yesterday. And the interesting thing is, it's his right wrist that I found out he's ambidextrous, and guess where he gets that from? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that, that was interesting. Yeah, but now he doesn't have an excuse to not do homework. <laughs> yes. Neck. And mom, always. Okay. You gotta be able to hook her up so she can watch us. You know, I know the high techness of it is uh, it's some daunting task, but uh, you know you can do it. <laughs> yes. Um, the Swedish woman that I met named Emma, who uh, was just just got pregnant and had a miscarriage in the, in the summer, so she was she was there. And, Pray that the Lord would open up the salvation for her also. And um, there's another woman named Sarah who is from Ukraine girls. Um, yeah. <laughs> Never easy. Amen. Talking about her. Kathy. Kathy. Okay. Yes. Um, friend's mom. Amen. 
Yes. Yeah, I'm praying for the uh, Christians in the world. Uh, right now, there seems to be a cleansing of Christianity throughout the world, more so than ever, including this country. Amen. Uh, in Nigeria, there's actually a genocide taking place where uh, 5,000 people have been killed within the last, I believe it was 15 months, all Christians. And basically, that's happening around the world. Amen. So we have to be vigilant in our prayers, but also keep an eye on things taking place in this country Amen. that are uprooting Christian values. Amen. <coughs> yes. That just just reminded me of the testimony, um, and it's the testimony from my daughter Anna, who when she was in Maine this summer, and the young people had these not Deb and I. <laughs> we're going down to the beach at night and she was um, ahead of all of us and she was just crying out to God for Melody's teacher for the coming year who was just now and that she would, you know at least have a soft heart towards Christianity and you know the things of God and all that um, and now fast forward Melody was writing something she wrote something about uh, Christmas hymns and songs and things that she wanted to sing. And her teacher said, um, she put a comment at the bottom of her paper and it said, I love to praise God. Maybe you can teach me those songs. Amen. And she had shown in other examples throughout the year that she's a Christian and it was a wonderful thing. And I my daughter goes back to that summer night in May where she was crying out to God and God answered that prayer wonderfully. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Butch? Yeah, I just, uh, my granddaughter and then when she finished her school this coming week, and uh, Monday she had the term paper to do, but then Tuesday she had the final, and then uh, Wednesday she was coming home. So I just prayed it all goes well there. Big push, yeah. Yeah. Well, praise God. All the kids are finishing up for the Christmas break and, and be able to come home from college. So uh, hopefully we'll see him see them when they come home. So that's that's a good thing. So praise God. Anything else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Of course, it's not just college, it's kind of post grad college kids they're home for Christmas so we're happy to see again reminding us that Justin's home for some Christmas time so praise God we welcome him home. Dear Heavenly Father Lord God we thank you for your nearness your mercy your grace we thank you Lord God that you are a God who hears and who answers our prayers Lord for the smallest things of having a teacher that's a Christian or soft towards that Lord God Thank you, Lord God, that in all of the oppression around the world, Lord God, that you are still able to shine and that people's lives are still being able to be changed for your mercy and your grace. We pray for uh, all the students, as we said, that are getting prepared to come home for the Christmas break. Let them get accomplished all the things that they need to do. For all those who are traveling, Lord God, we pray for your mercy and your grace. For all the people that we run into, Lord God, let us lift up your name and continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For those who are not feeling well, Lord God, for Jim's wife, Lord Deb, and for Kathy, and for Mike, we can continue to pray for his healing and strengthen. For Phineas being home, Lord God, continue to strengthen and heal that little baby, Lord God. For Rod and Larry and Clyde, Lord God, who need a a touch of healing in their bodies, Lord God. For David, who is supposed to be preaching in a church today, Lord God, we pray for your healing touch and your strengthening in him. Lord God, for this great grandson that needs to be healed in that wrist, Lord God, continue to have those bones continue to be healed and brought together, Lord God. For the list that uh, Edna has and that she's praying for all these uh, 
Janet and Janet and Tammy, Lord God, and Lord, we pray that you'd continue to show, Lord God, continue to be with them, and continue to lift them up in prayer, Lord God, for healing, Lord God. Lord God, for Jim's neck, Lord God, we pray right now that you would reach down and that you could heal and touch and strengthen and relieve any pain and put everything back in order, in perfect order, Lord God. We pray for that healing touch, Lord God, that comes from you. We thank you for your presence in our very service this day, that where two or three are gathered, that you are here in our midst, Lord God. Let us sense your presence. Let us hear from the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we would have ears to hear and eyes to see the things that you have revealed to us, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would use each of us as a witness, Lord God, there are so many difficult things going on in the world today, but we know that you are truly still the answer in the world today. If people would take the time to turn their attention to you, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to share with you this morning, you know, something that I've seen and that the world is definitely trying to take Christ out of Christmas. In fact, they're trying to take Christ out of everything. Christmas is just something that makes non-believers, some people, uh, so angry, you know? Uh, but, uh, you know, they've given a day to atheists, you know, April 1st. It says that uh, if those who don't believe in God really truly are fools. And we need to know that we need to continue to not put people down, but to lift people up. We need to continue to let people know about Jesus. We need to be fearless in the way that we do things. And not that we go and we take our Bible and take it and beat people over the head with it. No, we, we should just lift up the name of Jesus. We should have the joy of the Lord as our strength. Uh, we just read that, that particular uh, portion of scripture, which I truly love, and that's my main scripture this morning. And it's going to be talking about the shepherds in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And that the angel of the Lord stood near them, and that the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terribly frightened. Now, you know, so many times as believers, should we really be afraid when the presence of God is among us? When we see the, the light of an angel telling us a proclaiming message? Should we be frightened? Well, I've never had that experience, but I probably would be pretty terrified myself. So here the angel of the Lord comes and he says this. He says, fear not. How many times you see it in the Bible, and I've heard it, written in different ways that over 365 times the Bible tells us to fear not. Don't be afraid. Fear not. For I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this day in the city of David is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now I, I just want to kind of zero in on these verses and, and this great joy that we should really have. Do you truly have the joy of the Lord as your strength? You know, you know, there's several songs as we have as little kids. You know, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Now that's just a little song. You know, we have these things. He says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It says here, as the angel of the Lord is speaking to them, you know, he tells them that the Savior is going to be born, but he says, I bring you good news of great joy. 
Have you brought good news of great joy to anybody lately? Hello? Have you told somebody about Jesus? I have a dear friend that has, he's contagious, I tell you. I tell people this all the time about Jesus loves you. Has anybody told you that Jesus loves you? And they said, no. Well, guess what? Jesus loves you. You know, we need to tell them and to rejoice in it. We need to know that there is joy. You know, it's simple. And I put it online as a little advertisement in the church of Facebook about joy. If you want us joy, it's called J-O-Y. Jesus, others, and you. If you put them in that right order, you have joy. If you don't put them in the right order, if you put the Y first, which is you, it doesn't smell joy. It's going to bring, actually, confusion. If you start with Y-O-D, G, or any other thing, J, doesn't work. Joy. We need to know that the angel of the Lord came and they came to a bunch of shepherds sitting out around a campfire, keeping watch over their flocks by night. I don't know about you, but every time I sit around a campfire, okay, it seems no matter where I sit, the smoke comes towards me. Hello? Have you ever been there? So you, you got the smoke coming towards you, so you get up, and you go over to the other side of the campfire, and you sit down, and you start to warm up, and sure enough, the smoke turns. And I don't know why it is that way. You know, I kind of say, why don't I want to let somebody else sit down first, and let the smoke start going towards them, and then I'll take the other side. But you see, we need to know that we see these shepherds who are out in the fields keeping watch over there. They're working the night shift. What are they talking about? Oh, they're probably talking about taxes. They're probably talking about how the government is doing all kinds of things. They're probably talking about all the, the, the negativity and, and bad things that are happening in their lives. They're probably talking about how uncomfortable it is to sit I don't have anything to cushion my seat. Oh, and these stupid sheep. Oh, you know, but they got to keep their watch over their flocks by night. But then the angel of the Lord shows up, and I think it's very important that the church knows that the Lord will show up when you least expect it and bring you the good news. And sometimes be very exuberant and excited about something and we're sitting there yeah okay <laughs> you're kind of disturbing me here you're frightening me here don't be afraid listen to the good news that there is do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior do you have it well then give it to somebody else we talk about diseases all the time being contagious and everything else but the love of Jesus should be contagious too that we tell people about Jesus I was thinking about it again during this message and another little song came up. It says, if you want joy, it goes like this. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. Your sins he'll wash away. Your night he'll turn to day. Your light he'll make it over anew. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. My whole message for you today is just that. That God wants you to come and let him in. 
Behold, I stand at the door and knock, the scripture says. Anyone who lets me in, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. You see, we need to know that the Bible tells us that God is looking for that relationship. And during the Christmas time, whoo, what a wonderful time. You know, they, they, they say, you know, the most wonderful time of the year. Really? Why is it the most wonderful time of the year? Well, because the profits that can be made for the whole thing about all these other... No. That we can remember about Jesus and who he is. Now, the fact is, was he really born at Christmas? December 25th? Was that truly his birthday? You know, you look through the scriptures and when Jesus was traveling around with his disciples for about three years, there's no place in the scripture that says that Jesus had a birthday party. Right? Think about it. Did he ever have a birthday party with his disciples? No. Did he ever point him at himself and say, well, come on, it's all about me. No. He came for a purpose. He came to share. He came to forgive sins. He came to be the sacrificial lamb. He came for this thing, and it wasn't a particular time or season. Now, my wife and I were, were talking as we were in the car. I don't even know where we were going. We were just going someplace. And we were talking about it. Well, isn't it kind of crazy that, you know, we picked this day in the middle of the winter, you know, to be Christmas? And the reason that I've heard, that I like, and that I kind of receive is a, the reason that we celebrate Christmas on the 25th. Now, you know why we celebrate Sunday instead of another day? Because of the resurrection of Christ. We celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate the fact that the darkest day in Christian history was the day that Christ was crucified. It got dark, the sun didn't shine, as he was being sacrificed for you and for me. For our sins, it's the dark day that he died on the cross. It's a joyous day in the fact that that brought salvation, that that was what brought us to being having the paid sacrifice for my sins. So that was good, but it was a hard, hard, dark spiritual day. But three days later, the brightest day, the most important day, the reason we celebrate every Sunday is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Christ. We celebrate every Sunday. The resurrection day. The brightest day. That holy day. Well, when we look back, it was Pope Julius in the year uh, 350 AD, in the year of our Lord, 350. He proclaimed that Christmas, the birth of Christ, would be, drum roll please, <laughs> December 25th. Now, believe it or not, they still, there was nothing written down. Where did he come up with this revelation that this was the day? Well, a lot of people look at other things. And the closest thing they can come to is the fact that the darkest day of the year, the shortest day that has the least amount of light, is Dece uh, December 22nd. December 22nd, the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, the darkest day of the year. But three days later, the light of the world came. That's why I believe that this is a good ex uh, a, a reasoning why he picked that day. Because it was three days after the darkest day in the physical world that Christ came, that said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He told us that because of him, his light is reflected in you and me and that we can shed that light abroad about who Christ is. Fear not. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. 
Fear not. For behold, the Savior of the world has come in Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared an angel's a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among them whom he has pleased. You see, it's not peace for everybody. It's peace for those who are well pleased in the message that Jesus Christ is born. When you receive him, you receive peace. If you don't have peace, you are not receiving Christ. I don't know about you. Is there any other time in your life that you even day to day, week to week, month to month, that you have a time that you don't have the peace of the Lord? Come on, be honest with me. Because I know in my life there are times when I'm not at too much peace. There are things that I get upset about. There are things that upset me and rile me up. And I'm not at peace. But if I truly want peace, I want joy, I want these things, I need to turn my life over to Jesus Christ. He is the author and the finisher of my faith. It says in Romans 15, 13, this. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that enlightens us, enables us, empowers us to be the light that Christ wants us to be. You know, I, I have a, a string of lights that I put outside, you know, and I plug them in and they work. And then I strung them out and all over the thing and here I have all the, the thing. so plug it in. Zzz, to that bar, the rest of it <coughs> didn't work. So I had to undo. <laughs> Then I had a timer. So when it gets dark, it's going to turn on, right? Eh, doesn't. Doesn't work. It requires me to flip the switch. My wife says, oh, just leave them off. I said, no, I'm not going to let them just stay off. But see, in your life, we think that we have this automatic timer sometimes that the light of the Lord is shining in our lives and it just doesn't work. And yeah, it's too much trouble to let God's light shine in my life. All you have to do is flip the switch. Jesus is the power. Jesus is the one. And when the light of the world starts to shine, whew, he receives the honor and glory. It says right here, all joy and peace in believing abounds in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power that we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit to let his light so shine. It says in uh, Galatians, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. Hello. We need to remind people all the time that not just Christmas, but all the time that God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law, so that he might redeem us, all of us who are under the law that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters because you are sons of God as the spirit of his son is in our hearts crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a servant, but you are a son. And if a son, an heir unto God. You see, we need to know that this has been given to us. The Christmas presents are already wrapped. The salvation is the greatest gift that we can receive. That is the greatest thing, to see that love in that box. We don't even have to open it up. There is the salvation. There is the love. So much love that no box would be even be big enough. No present would be able to be big enough. God's love is, is so great and his mercy endures. We need to know that we have received that gift, that spiritual gift, that we have the joy of the Lord as our strength, and that we can go through day by day. In John 1, verse 10 through 14, it says this, 
And he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. That first verse right there, God created it, Jesus was with him, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It says that the world that we have, the world that came into being, was come into being because of him, and they don't know him. I've seen statistics just recently that saying this new generation are moving away from Christianity in the foolishness of it. I think they put the emphasis in the wrong way. The foolishness of walking away from it. There's where the foolishness is of walking away from faith in God and in the power and the love and the message of Jesus Christ. He came, he created, he is. And it says, and the world didn't know him. It says he came to his own, and his own received him not. And as many as received him, to them he has given the power to be called children of God. To those who believe in his name, who are born not of the blood, or not of the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. Are we born in the Spirit? Are we born again? Are we something different? Are we something renewed? You know, there was a, a, a pastor that continued to preach and his message was, he must be born again. He preached it over 300 times and was asked by a reporter, why do you preach that message so many times? Ye must be born again. And his answer was, because ye must be born again. We need to know that that is the message that must be proclaimed. And Jesus brought the message he brought the song, he brought the word, he brought the love, and we need to tell other people about it. Well, why doesn't he just send the angels again? He didn't say that that's what they were supposed to do. We are to remember what was said, what was done. We need to remember the wonderful story. We need to remember who Christ is. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. We have had that presented to us, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ, who died for your sins. Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead. Jesus Christ, who ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you. You know how many times? It goes back to the whole thing of brothers forgiving brothers. It says that Peter asked Jesus, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive my brother? Seven times? <laughs> he thought he was, you know, three times would be good. I'll, I'll make it. I'll be very spiritual here. Did I forgive my brother seven times? And Jesus says 70 times seven. In other words, continue. As long as he asks to be forgiven, we need to forgive. And as we do this, this is the message that Christ has for us, that our sins are forgiven. My sins are washed away. My night has turned today. You want joy, real joy, wonderful joy? Let Jesus come into your heart. That's the message that we have for Christmas. Not about buying gifts, not about doing programs, not about hoopla and all this other stuff. It's about letting Jesus come into your heart. How when was the last time that you asked somebody about Jesus? How many times have you told somebody about Jesus? How many times have you given them an opportunity to share about Jesus? You know, there are people who walk the walk and talk the talk to a certain degree, but they get pulled back. And, well, you know, I don't want to be too pushy. But you need to know that you have to be having an ear to hear the opportunities that are given. And if you don't know that I like to talk, you don't know me very well. But my wife and I went down to visit my sister and brother-in-law in the city and God put somebody next to her on the way down. 
And they talked, and they talked about Jesus. And guess what? On the way home, somebody was sitting right next to her that she could talk to again. I didn't talk to anybody. I just sat there and leaned back. In fact, I probably fell asleep. You know? What kind of a preacher are you, man? You didn't look for opportunities. To... Well, I didn't reject the opportunities, but I was blessed by the fact that my wife continued to be able to shed the light of Jesus and to share with these women who were in need of somebody to talk to and hear the word that, that there's something more important and that God is looking over them. You see, the experiences that we have, you know, don't have to be wrapped up in a special package. The package that we have, we, we've received all the time. We have that love. We have that trust. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Woo! God came down. It didn't say, you know, on December 25th. He came down and shared His Son and he grew up and he shared and he developed people to shed that good news. You know, we sing another song and we'll probably sing it maybe next Sunday. Go tell it on the mountain. We need to take the truth, the joy, the peace that we have and go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is real. You see, the world is casting it off. Whoa. And they're bringing in all kinds of things and, and going away from what the Bible teaches. Oh, you don't need that stuff. That's not scientific. That's not this or that's not that. And I don't know about you. The Bible tells me there is one way that seemed right unto man. Well, that leads to destruction. The narrow way that God has, there is only one way and that is in Jesus Christ. We need to know that we need to be following him. It doesn't matter all of a sudden. It doesn't matter the name on the door. It doesn't matter anything. It matters what's in your heart. Do you have to let Jesus come into your heart? You need to know that he is the one who has come to be the light of the world. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. The glory is the only son from the father full of grace and truth. Let's stop and bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we want joy, real joy, wonderful joy. So yet again, we want to let Jesus come into our heart. Come in today, come in to stay. Lord God, even when we turn our backs and when we do things that are not really in your plan and purpose, we thank you that you are there to help us back up, that we can put our hand in your hand. Lord God, we thank you for your mercy and your unmerited favor, that grace. Lord God, we thank you that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. As we look to Christmas, the most wonderful gift we can have is the redemptive power of the shed blood at Calvary. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and we thank you in advance for what you have yet to do. We ask you, Lord God, to let us be your light in this dark and dying world. Take away all fear, just as you did with these, these shepherds that were so terribly frightened. But you said, fear not. Lord God, we hear it again. Fear not. For there is great news of great joy, which shall be to all people. There are so many people who need to hear this word and that your spirit would move upon their lives, Lord God. Use us, Lord God, as your vessel. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Join me in the last hymn, another Christmas carol.
and the earth, but you came in a lowly form. You came and you taught and you loved, not about things that you were going to be so great, though you were, but that you would be the living sacrifice. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. We thank you, Lord God, for that greatest gift, the gift of our salvation, and we thank you, Lord God, that we can tell others about it and to rejoice in it. And the joy that we have is because we've let you come into our heart. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. 